Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the show that makes big winners out of the lowest scorers. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hello, my name's Andrew, this is my wife Kelly and we're from Wakeford in Essex. Couple number two. Hello, I'm Nick and this is my lovely daughter Elsa and we're from Camden Town. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Annie, and this is my wonderful husband, Nick, and we're from South East London. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Julie, and this is my partner, Ruben, and we live in Southampton. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have you all here. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. Two, four, six, eight. And, yes, we do appreciate him, but that's also his pin number. It's my Pointless friend, it's Richard. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Uh... Hey, everybody. Uh, more for you, my friend. It's 5719. Bad luck. Oh, no, you changed it. <laughs> Bad luck. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome back to our uh, returners. Andrew and Kelly, they've been on podium one both times and they've been knocked out in round one both times. Oh, no. So we're looking for a real Cinderella story this time round. That'd be lovely, but lovely to have you back. Uh, Reuben and Julie got through to the head to head last time. Very well played. Uh, where they played against Josh and Nigel. Ah, oh, yes. They went up to play for £3,000, oh. didn't they? On a, oh. on a nice geography question. Yes, yes, yes. Josh and Nigel absolutely nailed it. They won the jackpot last oh. time. So we start off today with a jackpot of £1,000. There we are. Right. I like hearing... I think sometimes contestants don't know that they're all mic'd up and we can hear everything. The size when you said that. <laughs> I know. There was, I think there was even a... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, well, there we are. Um, best of luck, everybody. Right, if ready, let's play Pointless. As you very well know, we will eliminate the pair with the highest score at the end of each round, so just keep your scores low. There we are. Well done. Here goes. Our first category this afternoon is... Chemistry. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many... Chemical elements beginning B, E, G, I, or N, as they could. There we are, Richard. Yeah, this is where we can start building the jackpot. There's always pointless answers in chemistry rounds, aren't there? Always pointless answers. Looking for anything on the periodic table, please, at the beginning of 2021 that begins with one of those five letters. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Kelly, welcome back. Thank you. Tell us more about yourself, Kelly. Um, so I'm a store manager for a retail company, and in a spare time, I like to spend a lot of time at home with Andrew and our pets as well, so we've got a dog. Slinky, a cat called Rocky, and we've got a Daegu called Sanchez. Very good indeed. OK, now, Kelly, the moment is here. This has got round two written all over <laughs> it. You haven't even told me what the answer is. Yes. What are you uh, going to go for? I'm going to go for nitrogen. Nitrogen, Yeah. says Kelly. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said nitrogen. Nitrogen is right. There, it down it goes to 56. 56 for nitrogen. Uh, yeah, nice start, of course. Um, it's all around us, Definitely. isn't it? Mixed Definitely. with oxygen. Oh, yeah. Which there I we go. Easily say. Yeah. Uh, now then, Elsa, welcome to Pointless. Great to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Um, I'm a student at Sussex University, and when I'm not studying, I like cold water swimming. I do a lot of that. Everyone loves cold water swimming. Everyone's yeah. doing it now. I know. It's, it's the new geocaching. Oh, do you do it daily? Um, well, because Sussex is near Brighton, I do a lot on the sea. I, oh, but I did more kind of like big ones with my mum. OK. Well, big, big cold water swims. Yeah, we did um, the Bosphorus and we did wow. Lake Geneva and the Y. And you crossed Wales. the Bosphorus? Yes. Good for you. It kind of sounds more impressive than it is. You kind of say, like, I swam from Europe to Asia, but actually it's not. It's just well, like a small little... I did, it, I did it lengthways. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's harder. Nice. Yeah. Upstream. Yeah. Excellent. Um, Elsa, what are you going to go for? Um, I think Einsteinium. I think that's Einsteinium, one. says yeah. Elsa. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Einsteinium is right. 56 is the only score we have at the moment, and you pass it. Einsteinium down to seven. Very well done indeed. <laughs> uh, very well played. Lovely start. Yeah, named after Steve Einstein. Thank you very much. Indeed, Richard. Now then, Nick B. Hi. Welcome. Uh, great to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Um, I work in, uh, for a TV production company, um, but I, in my spare time, I like to I write online for film reviews and TV reviews and things like that. 
That's fine. What do you do for the production company? I'm a digital media coordinator. Very good indeed. <laughs> now, Nick B, Chemical Elements. I, I was going to say Einsteinium, but I think I'm going to go for um, Indium. Indium. Let us find out. Indium. How many of our 100 said that? Indium is right. 56 is our high score, 7 is our low. You pass the high score. You pass the low. That's the point. It's answer. Very well done indeed. Nick, let's hope we see lots more of those. That adds £250 to today's jackpot, takes the total up to £1,250, scores you nothing and is marvellous. Well done. <laughs> That's a beautiful answer. Very, very well played. Uh, I said we might be able to uh, start adding to that jackpot. How lovely. Yeah, it comes from the Latin for violet. Indium. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Ruben, welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, remind us all about yourself, Ruben. Uh, so I work in marketing for a heating company. In my spare time, I'm an Arsenal fan. I pump a bit of iron and uh, I do a bit of poetry as well. Pumping iron and poetry. Yeah. See, those two things don't often <laughs> get... They're not usually put side by side in people's CVs. Um, more's the pity. Do you have a favourite poet, or do you? Or is it just? Uh, well, I'm I'm new to the game. Uh, nice I had then. some time off last year, so I've uh, started expressing myself more, being a bit. Oh, thank you. Are you still writing poetry? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do you read poetry? Uh, I should read some more. Do you know we should all read more poetry? It's something yeah. that we're sort of generationally we just didn't really mm. do it. I get it on audio books because sometimes they have the uh, people themselves reading it. Adam Bennett does a lovely thing where he goes through six different poets and he talks about what. The poems are about. Mm. I love it because that's what I need with poetry because I don't, don't really understand it. Well, exactly. Anyway, there we go. Ruben, uh, what are you going to go for? Uh, I think I retired my science brain about the age of 16, but I'm going to take a punt on nickel. Nickel. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said nickel. Nickel is right. 56 still a high score. You pass 56. Nickel goes down to 20. Not bad. Yeah, also, they're known for a five cent coin in uh, the US, mm. even though they've, uh, they've only got a very small amount of nickel in them. Oh, can you believe it? No. Um, right, we are halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. Nothing. Nick B was the best <laughs> score of the pass. Congratulations to you. <laughs> Seven is where we find Elsa and Nick P. Uh, 20 is where we find Ruben and Julie, and then Kelly and Andrew are on 56. So, Andrew, let's have a lovely low scoring one from you. <laughs> Anything could happen in the next pass. Be lovely to get you into round two and beyond. Good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? There we are. Julie, welcome back. Hiya. <laughs> Tell us more about yourself, Julie. Um, so I work for a charity in Southampton. Um, in my spare time, I coach and play netball, and I also recently started cooking more as well. Have yeah. you? What was it that got you into cooking? Um, just a bit of spare time. We've recently moved in together, so I've taken up the liberty of uh, cooking, Quite so I don't right. do the washing Have up. you got a nice set of knives and a nice saucepan? Yes. That's the sort got, of thing you yeah. want. Yeah, I love my kitchenware, so... Very good. Scares. Terribly yeah. important. <laughs> um, now, listen, you're on 20. If you can score 35 or less, you are straight into round two. I can't say this is the best round for me. Um, OK, this is music to Andrew's ears. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've got a couple that would... I'm pretty sure it would be very high scoring, but I'm going to take a punt on boron. Boron. Yeah, boron. don't think it's right. Here is a red line. Let's see where we end up with boron, shall we? It's absolutely right, Jude. <laughs> look at that. Shocked. Not only right, gets you into round two. Just look at that, 30. Needed 35, got 30. Takes your total up to 50. Very well done. Uh, very well played, yes. 72% of the world's uh, boron reserves are in Turkey. Can Goodness you believe me. that's why you feel so sleepy at Christmas? Because people, yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, now then, Annie, welcome. Hello. Great to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Um, so I used to work in fashion, but um, I now work as a software engineer. Uh, for a little company based in Wales. That's very exciting. So a very different career change. Yeah, very sure. different. So you were based in fashion, working in London, was that Working in London, yeah. Yeah. And do you miss it or is it just so I lovely do. being in Wales? I do miss it, but I don't miss the pace because it was definitely yeah. very fast paced for me. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Uh, now, Annie, 55 or less gets you into round two. So I think this is a risky one and I Good. don't want to look at my husband's face if I get it wrong. <laughs> um, I'm going to go for Nihonium. Nihonium. OK. Here is your red line. Nihonium. 
Let's see what happens when we say Nihonium. It's a risk worth taking. Gets you through. And it's a pointless answer. <laughs> I mean, that was the only risk. Would it not be a pointless answer? And it was a pointless answer, which means it adds another £250 to today's jackpot, takes the total up to £1,500, scores you nothing, leaves your total at nothing, and actually just, yeah, brilliant. Very well played. Uh, very well played, yeah. Andy. Nicely done. Yeah, not a risk at all. You just you just didn't want Nick to have the only pointless answer, did you? I could, <laughs> I could see that. Um, yeah, it's one of the new ones, of course, uh, Nahonium. We've, yeah. had it, uh, we've had it a few times before, yeah. but still pointless. Still pointless. There we are. Uh, now, Nick P, welcome. Good to have you here. Tell us yeah. all about yourself, Nick. Uh, so I'm a father of five children, including Elsa. Um, I run an occupational health charity, and then by night, I play five-side football, table tennis really badly. I've never won at either of those. That's nice, though. <laughs> Listen, for every five-side football, there's got to be there's got to be a team that never wins. That's that's yeah, good. Yeah. So our team's called Sticky Buns, and I'm the goalkeeper. So um, lots of goals that direction. Hey. <laughs> okay. Now, Nick P, you're on seven. 48 or less gets you through. Uh, so I'm going to go for beryllium. Beryllium, yep. says Nick P. Now I can see a look of pain just clouding across the brow of Andrew there. Beryllium, here is your red line, Nick P. Yes. I'm afraid beryllium oh, is right, Andrew. <laughs> and it gets you through, okay. Nick. Very well done to you. That goes down to 16, <laughs> takes your total up to 23. Very, Very well played, Nick. Um, yes, yeah, the first element on the periodic table to begin with one of those letters. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's the fourth in all. There we are, fourth yeah. in all. Thank you very much indeed. Andrew, welcome back. It's so lovely to have you back. Yes. I just, I, I'm now really upset, though, because we haven't had nearly enough of you. Absolutely. We and just haven't. I know Kenny mentioned yesterday we like to go and see films, and this feels a bit like Groundhog Day. Same stall, I know, same things stall. keep happening. Same things happening. I'm, I'm in the same situation. <laughs> all the same gags between yeah, Richard and me. Yeah. And all I say all the same things, never, never change my script. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I yeah. should do, but where's the fun in that? <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, for fun though, tell us about yourself. So, I'm a financial controller for a gift card company. Um, in my spare time, I like watching films and I'm a big fan of uh, Star Wars. Very good. Shot uh, here. Yeah. So in this studio. Oh, yes, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Shot right here. Yeah, the orig <gasps> original film, right? Wouldn't it be amazing if you could stand right here and just sort of have like a sort of uh, VR experience where you could just see everything that had been shot where you're standing mm. since Elstree Tree started? Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> It would mainly wow. just be you and I wanging on, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that's it's largely what it is. Um, Andrew, I'm sorry to say you are the high scorers, even before you give your answer, but okay. let's have a lovely answer from you. So, I'm going to try Neptunium. Neptunium, no red line for you, I'm afraid, as you're the high scorers. But let's see how far down the column we get with Neptunium. It's right. Oh, look at that, Andrew. I think that's fitting. Beautifully, heroically done. Your parting gesture was to give us a pointless answer and add £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £1,750. <laughs> it scores you nothing, leaves your total at 56. Rich. Lovely play, well done. Um, there's a few more pointless answers. Let's take a look. We've already had three. Um, uh, Berkelium, Gadolinium, there's Indium. There's Neptunium and Nihonium. Neobium, also a pointless answer. Uh, and Nobelium. Very well done if you've got any of those at home. Thank you very much indeed. So that brings us to the end of our first round. It means we have to say goodbye to our first pair, Andrew and Kelly. I'm so sorry. It's been lovely having you here. I just wish it had been longer. That's all. Um, but thank you very much for playing Andrew and Kelly. <laughs> Back for the remaining three pairs. Now time for round two. Well done, everybody. We made it through to round two. Fantastic work. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this afternoon is... Historical figures. Can you all decide on that basis? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Famous people born in the 19th century. Richard. Yeah, across two boards, you're going to see 12 uh, descriptions of famous people born in the 19th century. You'll see their initials as well. But who are they, please? Thank you very much indeed. OK, so I'm going to reveal uh, these six clues on our first board. And here they come. 
Budapest-born American magician known for daring escape acts, H. H, Spanish artist, famous as a founder of the Cubist movement, and for his paintings including Guernica, PP. Mathematician dubbed the first computer programmer for her work with Charles Babbage, AL. Member of the Bloomsbury Group, who wrote Mrs. Dalloway, VW. Writer and poet who wrote The Raven in 1845, EAP. And US businesswoman and philanthropist who specialized in African-American hair care, MCJW. There we are. Elsa. OK, so I think I know a few of these, but I think I'm going to go for a um, member of the Bloomsbury Group, Mrs. Dalloway, Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf, says Elsa. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Virginia Woolf. It is Virginia Woolf. Down it goes to 16. Very well done. Great well start done. to the round, Elsa. Very well played here. Yeah, born in 1882. Two of our 100 said uh, Vivian Westwood. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> there we are. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Nick. Hello. <laughs> the two that I think will be the lowest scoring are the two that I don't know. So I think I'm going to go with writer and poet who wrote The, the Raven in 1845, uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe says, Nick, let's see how many of our 100 people said Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe is right. 16 is the only score we have at the moment. That goes down to 39. Not bad. Yeah, born in 1809, Edgar Allan Poe. The Raven genuinely made him into like a pop star. It was like a like the, the huge hit song of the day or something like that. Kids just to follow him around in the streets. That's nice. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Um, and now then, Julie, the board's all yours. <sighs> um, I literally know none of them, so I probably have to go with Houdini. So Harold Houdini for the first one. Harry Houdini. Yeah. Houdini says Julie. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Houdini. Down goes 64. Not bad. Um, his brother, Theodore, was uh, also an escape artist, and he came up with a lot of the things that made um, Houdini famous. Uh, but Houdini became much, much, much more famous. So Theodore was sometimes called the other Houdini brother. Oh. oh. And he's the guy who came up with the oh, stuff. Oh, he did all the work. Oh. Uh, poor old Theodore. Go. Yeah. Now, um, PP. Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso, absolutely right. Uh, what a score, 53. AL, the I'm afraid this is where I dry up. It's Ada Lovelace. Ah, oh, yes. Who scores more and more as the years go by. Ada yeah, Lovelace, yes. seven points. Right She's Lord Byron's daughter, and at some point, we're going to switch over into Lord Byron being described as Ada Lovelace's father, I suspect. And the US businesswoman and philanthropist is Madam C.J. Walker, played by Octavia Spencer in Self Made, if you watch that. Uh, one point, if you said that. Very well played. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. That brings us to the halfway mark. And time for me to have a look at those scores. 16, the best score of the past, Elsa. Very well done to you. 39 is where we find Nick B and Annie. And then 64 is where we find Ruben and Julie over there on the far podium. Uh, Ruben, you get the new board. Try and find a lovely low-scoring answer, and that will keep you in the game. Good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put six more clues to people born in the 19th century up on the board, and here they come. Fashion designer who popularised the little black dress, CC. Activist and pacifist born in 1869 who became a leader in India's independence movement, MG. US inventor who patented designs for his phonograph and incandescent lamps, TE. Swiss psychologist who developed analytical psychology and ideas on personality types, CJ. Dublin-born writer of The Picture of Dorian Gray in 1891, O.W., and lyrical poet who wrote the poems Wild Nights, Wild Nights, and Success is Counted Sweetest, E.D. There we are. Reuben. It's not great for me. Uh, I think I know a few of them. I'm going to go for the uh, Swiss psychologist, say, Carl Jung. Carl Jung says, Reuben, there's going to be no red line for you because you're the high scorers at the moment. Let's see how many of our 100 said. Carl Jung. Carl Jung is right. It's a good answer, Ruben. Look at that. Down again to 25. Well done. Taking your total up to 89. Well played, born 1875. He invented, amongst many other things, or coined the terms introvert and extrovert. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Indeed, Richard. Now then, Annie, we're looking for a score of 49 or less from you. I'm really, really rubbish at history. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with... 
the US inventor who patented designs as Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison, says Annie, for the US inventor. Here is your red line, just under halfway down. Uh, let's see how many of our 100 people went for Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison is right. Gets you through. Look at that, 44, taking your total up <laughs> to 83. Born in 1847, his first job was a telegraph um, operator, you know, doing Morse code. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Nick P. We're looking for a score of 72 or less from you. Mm. I think this is easily achievable. <laughs> um, you. Would you like to talk us through the board? Uh, well, I think the top one, uh, my wife would be proud of me. I think that's Coco Chanel. Second one, uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Um, O.W., I mean, I'm thinking Orson Welles, but he's a film director, so I don't want to be stupid on that one. Uh, lyrical poet, I'm sure Elsa knows, but I don't. So I'm going to go uh, for Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi yeah. says, Nick, OK, here is your red line. Let's see if we can get you below that with Mahatma Gandhi. It is right, and you are through. Very well done, indeed. That goes down 41. Takes your total up to 57. Well played, Nick or Mahanas Gandhi. Uh, we'd have taken as well. Would have scored you 41 points. Uh, CC, you're right, Coco Chanel. She would have scored you 58. The OW is... Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde. Would have scored you 44. And do you know the poet? Um, Shall I tell you? Yes. Emily Dickinson. Ah, it's a pointless Emily answer, though. So very well mm. done if you said Emily Dickinson at home. There we are. So, thank you. At the end of our second round, we have to say goodbye to another pair, Reuben and Julie. This is the second time we've said goodbye to you. There'll only be one more goodbye. Please, can it be while you're both clutching <laughs> trophies? I do hope. Um, anyway, thank you very much for playing, Reuben and Julie. For the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. -head. Congratulations, Elsa and Nick and Annie and Nick. You're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £1,750. But... Before we play the head-to-head, -head, we have further opportunity to swell that jackpot, see if we can chuck a couple more uh, pointless answers its way. Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many characters in the novel Dracula yeah. as they could, Richard. Yeah, it's going to be six names on the board. Four of them will be from Bram Stoker's Dracula. Two of those will be pointless answers. There'll also be two fake answers up there, so Bram Stoker or Sham Joker. <laughs> oh, that's just great. Uh, let's have a look on the board, see what we've got. We've got Arthur Homewood, Renton, Quincy Morris, Monica Eremia, Peter Hawkins, Dr John Seward. Oh, they're all quite spooky. <laughs> I read it. Have you read it? Yeah, yeah. Nick's okay. I, know, I know three of them are right. I know Arthur Homewood's in it. I know Quincy Morris is in it. And I know Dr Seward's in it. <laughs> I think Renton might be a red herring, but beyond that, I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know who Monica Arimia would be, but I also don't know who Peter Hawkins would be in the novel, so... So we're down to Arthur, Quincy or John. Those are, the, those are definitely correct. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, Elsa and Nick, we're going to come to you okay. first. Should we go for Quincy? Then? Yeah, Quincy Morris. You're going to go for Quincy Morris. Shall we find out if Quincy Morris is a pointless Dracula character? Well, Come as on. we knew, Quincy Morris definitely features in the book. And that's a point of oh, yeah, Very well <laughs> done indeed. And what a lovely combined effort that was. Fantastic. Now then, Annie and Nick B. <laughs> well done, oh. thank you. <laughs> we haven't had a double point this for so we long. Oh, we, we haven't. I'm, I'm guessing then the two that I know as characters of the book are almost definitely point scoring answers then. I would say. And those, those ones are, just to be sure, uh, Arthur Homewood. Uh, Arthur Homewood and Dr John Stewart. So it's Monica and Peter. Um, what do you think? Um, let's do it. Which one? Peter, you want to do we'll Peter Hawkins? Pe we'll go Peter Hawkins. We'll go Peter Hawkins. OK. OK. <sighs> I've just pointed 23 shows since we last had a double point this, by the wow. way. Wow. Doesn't happen very often. Wow. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Let's find out. Listen, let's not speculate any further. Peter Hawkins, pointless Dracula character? 
It's right. It's right. Oh, Nick, please, can this be? Can we break our 23 show duck here with Peter Hawkins? We can! Yes, well done, That's fantastic. Very well done indeed. <laughs> Richard. Yeah, listen, I'm going to go on record as saying that, that was sort of a one man show in a funny kind of way. You did that so uh, beautifully. <laughs> you can't play it better than that. You told everyone who was in it. Uh, you spotted one of the red herrings. The only thing you did wrong is you didn't spot the other red herring. Um, so the other red herring, Monica Erimia, she was born in Transylvania and she was born on Halloween. Is she one of the cheeky girls? She's one of the cheeky girls. Oh, that's exactly. hilarious. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Renton is, um, is train spotting, which is incorrect. And the other two, you'd heard of them, so they scored points. I mean, that's a masterclass. That was a masterclass. Because you found two pointless answers, which means, let me tell you how the maths works, <laughs> means we can add 500 pounds to today's jackpot, takes the total up to 2,250 pounds. That's extraordinary. We started with less than half that. That's better than a grand, isn't it? Oh, isn't it? Oh, oh. well done. Well done, everyone. Well done, well done. But who'll be playing for it? Let's find out in the head-to-head. First pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. You are now allowed to confer a deux. Here comes the first question, and it concerns films based on video games. Richard. Yep, five stills now from films based on video games. We'll show you the initial of the film as well, but what are these films, please? Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our five films based on games. Here they come. We've got A, S, T, H. B, S, F. C, T, A, B, M. D, R. And E, T, R. There we go. Go. So, Elsa and Nick, you'll go first. Feel free to confer. So, thank you for any emergency. So, A, Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay. Um, I think we're going to go for A, Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. Say Elsa and Nick for A. Now, Annie and Nick, talk us through that board. Okay. Um, so, B is Street Fighter, C, the Angry Bird movie, E, Tomb Raider. We're going to go with D. I think it's called Rampage. Rampage. I think. OK, Rampage. So we've got Sonic the Hedgehog and we've got Rampage. Let us find out. Um, Elsa and Nick P went for Sonic the Hedgehog for A. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Sonic the Hedgehog is right. Ooh, that goes down to 60. <laughs> Meanwhile, Annie and Nick B have gone for Rampage for D. Let's see how many of our 100 said Rampage. It's right, and it wins it for you. Look at that. Very well done, Rampage. Absolutely right down to 22, and it means Annie and Nick B. After one question, you are up 1-0. Uh, very nicely played. Funnily enough, not the best answer on the board. Street Fighter, actually, is a, is a lower scorer. It looks like a great film, doesn't uh, it? It was, <laughs> it was quite something, that's for sure. Uh, 20 points, though, so well there done you said that at home. C, you're absolutely right, it was the Angry Birds movie. That's the biggest scorer on the board. It scored you 62. Uh, and E, you're quite right, it's Tomb Raider. And would have scored you 38. Very few good movies based on video games. Yes. You're right. doesn't work. There we are, thank you. Now, here comes your second question. Elsa and Nick B, you have to win this one to stay in the game. Annie and Nick B get to answer it first. So there we are. Our second question is all about... David Williams. Richard. Yeah, five clues now relating to David Williams. What are the answers to these? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal the five Williams clues. And here they come. Comedian he played in the 2008 TV biopic Rather You Than Me. Comedy partner whom he met at the National Youth Theatre when they were both teenagers. Title of the BBC sitcom, first broadcast in 2013, in which he plays chemistry teacher Mr Church. Television soap, in which he made a cameo appearance in 2003. And his surname at birth. There we are. Annie and Nick B get to answer first. I think we're going to go for the television soap in which he made a cameo appearance, which we think is Neighbours. Neighbours, say Annie and Nick B. Um, OK, Elsa and Nick P, it's over to you. Do you want to talk us through that board? Hmm. I think the National Youth Theatre Teenager one is Matt Lucas. 
title of the BBC sitcom we think is Teachers. I don't really know. What do you think we should go for? We've got to take a risk because um, I think Matt Lucas isn't going to beat, yeah, no, beat that, so let's go okay. for Teachers. Teachers, I think. Yeah. OK, you're going to go for Teachers for the sitcom. So we have Neighbours versus Teachers. Um, Annie and Nick B have gone for Neighbours, the soap. We made a cameo appearance in. Let's see if that's right. Oh, not right, which means, um, Elsa and Nick P, you merely have to be right with teachers and you will win the point. Is it right, though? Oh, she's going back with us. No! Oh, there we sorry. are. Oh, this is... Uh, this happens rarely, but it seems it's happened in recent, uh, <laughs> yeah, in recent times, times, actually, recently, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. The soap was EastEnders. Oh, oh OK. <laughs> And he played a pal of Alfie Moon in EastEnders. That would have scored you 10 points. And, yes, yeah, so if you said Matt Lucas, which, uh, of course, is correct, um, you'd have got yourself the point. Would have scored you 32. The BBC sitcom, not teachers. It's called Big School. Big School, yeah. The two series of that would have scored 18. The comedian he played, you could sort of Frankie see Howard, it. Howard, yes, Frankie, Frankie Howard, Howard, yes, yeah. I do remember that. Uh, would have scored you five. And his surname at birth? Williams. Williams, absolutely. And that would have scored 30. And I used to write with David years ago. And I was there the afternoon he came back from equity. And he said, oh, they said there's already a David Williams. I had to change my name. So I said, oh, what have you changed? He said, I, I just said Walliams. <laughs> so actually a quite idea. a good joke. It's but good, yeah. Now, you know, kind of 30 years later, yeah. you're stuck being called David Walliams. There while. you are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Right, time for your third question. Um, again, Elsa and Nick, you have to win this one to stay in the game. So good luck. Our third question is all about... Mountain ranges in the United States, Richard. Yep, five US mountain ranges here, but we've missed out alternate letters from their names. What are these ranges, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal the ranges, and here they are. We've got... S-E-R-N-V-D, O-A-K, R-C-I-S, G-E-T, S-O-I-S, and A-P-L-C-I-N. OK, Elsa and Nick will go first this time. Okay, so we're going to go for Appalachians. The Appalachians, okay, at the bottom there. Now, Annie and Nick, can you talk us through the board? <laughs> um, I think the top one might be Sierra Nevada. The third one down might be the, the Rockies. Yeah, let's go for Rockies. Okay, let's go for the Rockies. Okay, you're going to go for the Rockies. We've got the Appalachians and we've got the Rockies. Um, Elsa and Nick P have gone for the Appalachians. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people got it. Appalachians is right. And that goes down to 28. <laughs> Meanwhile, Annie and Nick B have gone for the Rockies in the middle there. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. Rockies. The Rockies is absolutely right. And that goes down to 42. So, well done, Elsa and Nick. Back in the game after three questions. It's one all. Very nicely done. Yeah, Rockies, the biggest score up there. It's just occurred to me what a, what a prosaic name Rockies is for, for some mountains. Yeah. But, oh, yeah, the Rockies. Yeah, the Rockies. Um, Sierra Nevada would have seen you into the jackpot round. Uh, would have scored you 23. The next one down, TV fans will know this now. It's a huge Netflix show called this. It's the Ozarks. Oh. And that would have scored you 11. Can you work out this one? It's the great, great. something. Yeah. Sp mm. Sp Sp Spears. The great. Shaw. The great Sean. Seanis. The great Sean. Small. The great Smokies. <laughs> yeah, the great Smokies. The great Smokies. Yeah, good name for a band as nice. well. That's yeah. a pointless answer. Well done if you said great Smokies. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now, here comes a fourth question. This doesn't happen very often. Um, yeah, whoever wins this one goes through to the final place for that jackpot, so best of luck. Our fourth oh, question is all about... Rodents, Richard. We've got five rodents, but we spelt their names in alphabetical order. What are these rodents, please? There we are, five rodents, and these are alphabetical... alphabeticized anagrams. So we have got... I always like reading these out. Abirv, Ahimst, Begir... Kinapru and Ilkursu. There we are, that helps a lot. And uh, Annie and Nick, you get to go uh, first. Middle ones, the middle um, torn between two middle ones. Um, I think we'll go for second to bottom, porcupine. Porcupine, say Annie and Nick B. Right, Elsa and Nick P, talk us through that board. Um, so we aren't very good at this, I don't think. I think you got beaver for the first one. 
and Gerbil for the third one. Um, I've no clue about the rest of them. Which are you going to go for? We're going to go for um, Gerbil. Gerbil. OK, Gerbil. <laughs> we've got Porcupine, we've got Gerbil. Um, Annie and Nick B went for Porcupine. Let's see how many of our 100 people got that for the one up from the bottom. Porcupine is right. Oh, it's good. That goes down to 23. 23 for Porcupine. Elsa and Nick P, meanwhile, have gone for Gerbil. Let's see if that's right for the middle one. How many of our 100 said Gerbil? Gerbil is roll. Oh, yeah. 38 for Gerbil. Well done. Wow. Annie and <laughs> Nick B, eventually, well after four oh questions, gosh. you are through to the final. 2-1. Yeah, the best two answers on the board as well, so nice end to the head-to-head -head there. Um, top one absolutely is Beaver, would have scored 58. Next one down? Uh, hamster. Hamster. Would have scored 46 on the biggest score on the board? Squirrel. Squirrel. And that would have scored 67. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, Elsa and Nick P. Well, whichever pair was going to be leaving us, the consolation was going to be that we get to see them again. Yeah, so uh, there we are. Otherwise, it would all have been over like that. But thank you very much for playing. We'll see you next time. Look forward Thanks. to it. Elsa and Nick P. Thanks. For Annie yeah. and Nick B, though, time for the bonus final. Congratulations, Annie, Nick B. You have fought off. Well, I, do you know what? I'm just going to call you Nick from now on. From now on, <laughs> let's drop the B. Come on, last round. Well done, Annie and Nick. You've fought off all the competition. You have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now just have to win the pointless jackpot. Here we are, the end of today's show. The jackpot is standing at £2,250. Um, what do you want to see come up? I mean, films, film, I think definitely. Films would be ideal. Okay. Um, um, Bowie. Yeah, you're really good with Britpop. Disney, Disney, Disney Pixar. Good. Let's find out what's going to be up there. There'll be four things as ever. You just have to choose the one that suits you the best. We can give you Charlie Chaplin, Literary Honours, West Indies Cricket, Friends, Romans, and Countrymen. What do we think? Friends, Romans, and Countrymen could be broad, uh, could be Shakespeare, or it could be like. I think it's a choice between the the first and last. I reckon you know a lot about Charlie Chaplin, but this is all on you. I don't know anything. Um, Charlie, go Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin. You're going to go Charlie Chaplin. OK. OK. I mean, listen, there's film stuff in here. We are looking for any of the following, please. Any of the cast of the 1992 film Chaplin, please, according to IMDb. Any film starring or directed by Chaplin, according to his own website, short films and long form films, uh, both count. Or oh, the first names of any of his four wives or uh, 11 children, please. So, cast of Chaplin, uh, any film starring or directed by Chaplin, or the names of his wives and children. Very best of luck. Thank you very much. As always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win the jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Okay. I, can, I think I can only contribute one thing, which is, I know that his daughter is called Una Chaplin, who's... No, that's, that's oh. his granddaughter. Oh, Gerald, granddaughter. Oh, Geraldine okay. Chaplin is his daughter, but I don't think that's going to be pointless. Um, I've seen... I don't, haven't seen Chaplin, so I know Robert Downey Jr. played him, but that's not going to be pointless, I think. So I'm just going to think about films. Okay. So there's... Um, Mon, uh, there's Monsieur Verdu. I think that might be quite low. Limelight might be quite low. All the others, I think, will be put. I think will be. There's all the other ones I know, like the Gold Rush and um, the Kid and <laughs> Limelight, the Kid, Modern Times, City Lights. Yeah. But I think they're going to be really high That's scoring. Cool. So I think I'll, I'll go with. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. Um, I keep thinking. I keep thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but ten uh, seconds left. Who else would be in chapter ten? It's a Richard Attenborough film, so I don't know. Richard Attenborough might be in it, but I don't want to miss that. Okay, I'll just go with. OK, there we are. That is your time up. Let's have your three answers. OK, so I think... <sighs> Monsieur Verdu... Monsieur Verdu. Limelight. Limelight. And... Uh, the Kid. The Kid. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer, do you think? I think Monsieur Verdu, because I think that's the sort of dark one that isn't really... That doesn't feel like a chapter. Film, OK, right? Monsieur Verdu. I'm guessing we'll probably put the kid first. Yeah. And then we'll put uh, Limelight in the middle. That's right. Lovely. OK, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We've got the kid, we've got Limelight, and we've got Monsieur Verdu. Well, very, very best of luck. Three good answers on the board. 
I mean, if one of these were to win that jackpot for you, £2,250 in the jackpot, what would you like to do with that if you were to win? Annie, I'm going to ask you first. Um, so we went to Japan recently, but I was pregnant at the time, so I didn't get to eat sushi. So we've probably, you've got to go back and do that properly. We'll probably go back to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. Nick, how about you? We've got, we've got a son, so I'm going to put somebody look after him, I think, while you're swatting off around Japan. <laughs> OK, well, listen, very, very best of luck. Uh, you can uh, work that out if you, if you win. So let's hope yeah. one of these answers wins that jackpot for you. The kid was your first answer. You weren't expecting this one to be pointless, but let's find out. It's just a useful way of gauging what our 100 people know. Is the kid pointless? We're looking for Charlie Chaplin films for £2,250. But the kid's right. Down we go with the kid. If this stops at nothing, you win £2,250. Oh, it's OK, six. Six for the kid. That's pretty impressive. OK, limelight is your next answer. Let's find out how many of our 100 people said in limelight. For £2,250, is it pointless? Limelight is right. Well, the kid took us down to six. We're on Charlie Chaplin Films. Limelight now takes us down through the teens into single figures, passing six. Still going down with Limelight to oh. two. This is good. <laughs> OK, we have everything now pinned on Monsieur Verdu. This is the one you were pretty sure would be the most obscure of the three you gave, so let's find out. Of the Charlie Chaplin Films, might this be the pointless one? £2,250 riding on it. Monsieur Verdu. He's right. Well, the kid took us down to six. Limelight took us down to two. Monsieur Verdu now takes us down through the teens. In single figures, still going down, passing six, still going down, passing two, you're done! Oh, there oh, well, oh, done oh, <laughs> Monsieur Verdu was a pointless answer. <laughs> that means you are going to take home today's jackpot of £2,250. I mean, what a performance from start <laughs> to finish. That's amazing stuff, wasn't it? Yeah. Right from that round one where you were competing to get pointless answers uh, <laughs> all the way through to the end. Very, very nicely played. Shall we go through the, uh, the pointless answers in the different categories? Uh, the film Chaplin. Some big names in this. Anthony Hopkins, a pointless answer. Dan Aykroyd, Kevin Klein, Marissa Tomei. Uh, everyone pointless there, apart from Robert Downey Jr. Uh, Geraldine Chaplin is in it. Uh, John Thor and Moira Kelly. Everyone else is a pointless answer. Um, those films uh, starring are directed by Chaplin. Uh, the very final film he did, uh, he directed Marlon Brando and a Countess from Hong Kong. Easy Street is a pointless answer. There's Monsieur Verdu. Uh, and The Circus got an honorary Oscar for that. All the ones you mentioned pretty much were uh, scored points. The Great Dictator, Modern Times, The Tramp, The Gold Rush, City Lights, uh, The Pilgrim. Those are the other scorers. Uh, and his wives or children, uh, Annette, Christopher, Eugene, Josephine and Norman were the pointless answers there. Very well done if you've got uh, any of those at home and congratulations, absolutely. What a great performance from start to finish. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Richard. And thanks once again to our wonderful winning players, Annie and Nick B, who take away today's jackpot of £2,250. <laughs> <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. That is goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>